a short video about what has been described in QST as a clothesline antenna. But it's got a twist, as you'll see in a moment. As described, it was a folded dipole. That has a characteristic impedance of around 300 ohm. I've opened it out a bit to make it more like a loop. That should give it a feed point impedance of around 200 ohm. Now what you're seeing here is a 4 to 1 ballon. It's only for low power, so I've just round it on a Ferrite FT50-43. The aim of that is to transform the impedance to 50 ohm for the transceiver. As for the dimensions, I've just got it up on a fence with a nail here to hold up its corner. It's just for testing. No doubt its proximity to the ground will change the results as it's less than two meters above it. The length of the dipole is about five meters end to end. Therefore, it should be suitable for 28 megahertz. But is it good for other bands, such as six meters as well? Keep watching and find out. I've just got the antenna connected to a short length of coax feed line. You can see a pronounced drop and a 1.4 to 1 VSWR. The resonant frequency is just above 25 megahertz. Now the big thing with the clothesline is what happens when you adjust the position of the center. That is, instead of it being a center fed dipole, you make it slightly off center. Technically you'd have some reels so you could easily move the wire, but we'll just pull it and see what happens. I've now moved it so it's about 20 centimetres off centre. Moving it off centre has shifted its resonant frequency slightly. But let's go further off centre and see what happens. The VSWR is much lower at 1.1. An interesting thing is that I had a look at a wider frequency range and there's also a drop above 50 megahertz, 1.8 to 1. Not great, but not bad either. And if we go back before, we're down to 1 to 1 at 25 and a half megahertz. So you should be able to adjust the dimensions a little bit and get something that resonates on 12 meters, maybe also six. I've just shifted it a bit more to the left and we're down to 1.2 to one in the six meter band. Also a respectable 1.2 to one at 25, actually just under 26 megahertz. So a bit off frequency now. In case you want to replicate what I'm doing, let's do some measurements. This is 1.95 metres from the centre up to the other end.
1.7 litres. So we are about one third fed the way along. 1.95 metres on this side and 3.7 metres here. Now I'll just give you the dimension across the top. Oh, before I do, from the top down to the 4 to 1, it's 50 centimetres. Now of course with some trigonometry you could then calculate the distance, the length of the longer wire, but we won't bother with that, we'll just measure it. The length across the top is exactly 5.5 metres, so to get the amount of wire, it's 5.5 metres plus 1.9 plus what did we have here? I think it was about 3.7, 3.75, something like that. So I think it's about 11, 11 and a half metres of wire, which is the result you'd expect for a half wavelength folded dipole that resonates on around 25 megahertz. All right, just for fun, we'll keep moving this and see what other interesting frequencies we can get. Just having a look down here, we're now back up to about 1.2 to 1 and it's still around 25 megahertz. We'll just try and have a look at um, 50 megahertz, see what's happening there. Now it's a very flat curve hardly a dip at all at around 2 to 1 and that is about 49.2 megahertz. I've moved it even further so it's now extremely off center. It's probably only about a quarter. We'll just see if there are any higher frequencies that there's a dip at. Now interestingly there is at 75 megahertz it's a deep dip, although I have got the range at 30 megahertz, so I should narrow that. And it's a 1 to 2 VSWR. So if you are in Europe with access to the 70 megahertz band, an off center folded dipole for a lower frequency may well work on that band. I've kept going nearer the end, so it's barely a meter. And the trend continues. We've now got a dip at around 100 megahertz. 1.4 to 1. Not sure how good the ferrite is up at that frequency. Meanwhile, I'll see what happens down at 25 megahertz. By now, there's no dip at all. But when I flick the switch to 50 ohm, there is a small one at 26 megahertz. Now I've moved the antenna a bit nearer the center. I've moved the feed point a bit nearer the center. Now I've got a respectable dip again near 50 megahertz. 1.2 to 1. It's about 2.05 meters from the end. Meanwhile, at 25 megahertz, we've got a very sharp null, 1 to 1. I'm not going to put this on the air and do some experiments with it. That's for you. Try this antenna. All you need is a little bit of wire, a 4 to 1 ballon, and an antenna analyzer, and see how you go. Let me know in the comments below. I certainly haven't refined what I've got here, but I'm sure you'll agree that it's certainly something promising if you want a simple dual band antenna. And remember, if you want to, you could scale up its dimensions. For instance, you might be able to have an antenna that does both 40 and 20 meters. Maybe even higher bands as well. If you're curious about this antenna analyzer, it's the Antrino that I've reviewed in a previous video. Also, if you like experimenting with antennas, don't miss the two books I've written on them. Hand-carried QRP antennas and more hand-carried QRP antennas. Books highly recommended if you're into experimenting with antennas, particularly if you also go portable.